John Zuzka with Zuma Concepts. Today I'm going to bring you a quick video on a practical use for this uh, bog death grip. Um, if you've seen some other videos, I just recently got this and I did it, used it in a shooting competition. I've been messing around with it and I actually, um, I'm about to put a scope on my brother's gun for him and I thought, man, this would be a really cool way to do it. It's got some good features. The way that this thing vices the gun down and holds it in place um, is, is really, it's a really great setup. Um, I think if you're ever going to try to put a scope on, this is a little bit nicer than using a bench in your garage because you got to kind of work around the bench and navigate where once I get this thing set up, it, the uh, pot itself has a leveling bubble so I can get that out of the way. I can make sure that's nice and level. And then I'm going to show you uh, a couple ways of doing it. I have this uh, Wheeler Engineering um, scope mounting kit. This thing is really nice. But with this setup, I'm actually going to show you another way to do it um, using just a torpedo level. Uh, this isn't the best way, but sometimes if this is all you guys got at home, this is a good enough way. Um, so I'm going to jump in here. I'm going to throw this thing together and start moving it around and showing you what I would do and how I would um, use this. So what I'm doing here is the floor I'm working on is real uneven and I'm moving the tripod till I have the bubble directly away from one of the legs. So that way I can adjust one leg and bring this thing into center. It's, a, it's an above circle bubble like that right there. So you got to try to get that bubble dead center in there. By having that bubble straight away from this leg, I'll be able to adjust this leg and bring that bubble into the center. Um, but first I'm going to lower this down and make it easier to work on. So that's about as close as I can get it to perfect in there. This is a good height for me to work on the gun. Um, I'm going to get it clamped back in there. Another thing that I'm going to use this for when I'm done is once I get this scope on here, um, I'll go through some steps with you on how to bore sight your scope after doing something like this. So by taking the torpedo level, you're going to want to go front and back on the gun and left and right because you're trying to get this gun to stay 100% square. <clears throat> when you use this, the wheeler, this thing's really slick. This allows you to, to get it set using the small one to make sure where you want to be. And then you take this one here and this one actually clamps onto the barrel. And what this will allow you to do is to maintain a constant level on the gun, no matter what, based off of the original set. So if you got to take it out of the vise and you need to look at anything uh, while you're installing this, you can always go right back to level with this one that's locked in place. And it's really neat the way it works. You get it on there nice and snug and then it has an adjustment to fine tune that bubble to match this bubble. And one thing I do is if I notice that I'm not dead perfectly center, it's okay as long as I make this bubble look exactly like this bubble and then I'm matching my level. You're always going to want to make sure that it's as dead center as possible, but what I'm talking about is just a minute identification of what that, where that bubble is and how close it is to that line. And then when you mount the scope, I'll show you how you use this in the torpedo, then on the scope to match this bubble again. So now, no matter what, everything is in alignment to your rail. And you want a rail on your gun 
not like in this particular case on this type of rifle, you don't want to go up on your hand guard. It might not be accurate to the frame of your firing system. Now this is in place and secure. I can technically take this gun out, move it around, put it back in. And as long as I match the scope, once it's on here to this bubble, you're gonna be good. And I'll show you that as we're going. This here is a scope my brother asked me to put on. It's, some, it's all his same equipment. Um, this isn't necessarily the same stuff I would use, but this is his. And uh, just to help, help him out with the situation, uh, we're using something that he had on a different rifle. The fact that he used this on a different rifle, he had different mounting levels here because his, his other rifle, this was a good setup for. Well, on this flat top, we need to put a riser on it. All the riser's gonna do is give us a little bit more height so that when I go to put his scope on, I'll be able to get it at the right eye level for him to be using. There is not a great science to this. I mean, this a lot of this is personal preference. If you like to smash your face down on that gun to look at the scope, you might not need something like this. I need it for clearance on his forearm, um, or his forearm, but um, it also helps get that scope up in the air a little bit so he can kind of relax his head into the side of that gun instead of having to really get down on it. Um, and with my brother too, he's cross-eyed dominant, so he actually aims with his opposite eye, so he really, he's gonna rest his head on there, so the higher that scope is, the lot more comfortable it is for him to shoot. Once I get this tightened down, I'm going to put the level back on it to make sure this hasn't changed anything. It definitely shouldn't, all of this is machine, but it doesn't hurt to check everything at every step. I'm choosing to use channel locks. Uh, this particular mount requires a large flathead. Um, I'm not a big fan of that, I don't feel like you can get enough torque on it, so I'm. I'm real careful, I get a tight grip, and I snug that up. I say tight grip, because if you don't have a tight grip and it slips, it's gonna mar this all up and look like trash. Uh, if you notice when I was tightening this up, it moved. We're just gonna put that torpedo back on there. We're gonna bring it back to level. We're gonna double check this, and we'll start working on the scope. Bubbles are still matching. Bubbles are still matching. So now we're gonna move into putting this thing on and then I'll show you how to level the scope. So when I go to level the scope, I generally take the scope cap off. And the reason I do that is if there's any imperfections on this cover, it's not going to be accurate to the alignment of the scope. And we're gonna put our level on this top turret and that's gonna be the bubble that we're gonna to match to this and this should be a 90 degree perfect alignment. So that's how you do that with this wheeler setup. If you don't have this wheeler set up, I'll show you how I used to do it prior to me buying this. You know, I only did one or two here and there and then I started to do a bunch of them. So it made sense for me to buy this and, it, and it's an awesome product. I would recommend it if you're gonna do more than one scope. But if you're only gonna do one scope, there's a good possibility that <clears throat> you have one of these laying around your garage. It's called a bastard file or a general purpose mill file. And it's the, it's kinda got that rat tail to it. It's made out of hardened tool steel. So you know it won't be bent. Um, I know it's possible that it could be, but likelihood it's gonna break before this was bent, and that's why I use this. And I'll show you how you're gonna use this to make sure that you remain level while you're leveling your scope. So you start with this file, and you're gonna use rubber bands, use one or two. You want it to get a nice, good, firm hold, so I like to use two. And then you're gonna go under the scope with the file, anywhere it'll fit, and then you take the rubber band while holding the file. Be careful holding this file. Um, you don't wanna wiggle it or move it because it's going to leave abrasions on, on your top rail. So you reach around, you grab this rubber band, go down, stretch it good, and you hook it back on the back side. And then you're gonna wanna work with this a little bit till you feel it lock in and it's just sitting 
flat on top of that rail. Like right there, that's, that's nice and firm. That sucker's not going anywhere. And what this does is it eliminates the use for this. Now you're gonna take either your torpedo level or a small level, and now you can leave that sit on there, and that's gonna tell you that your rail is level, and then you can start to work on this, making this one here and this one match. You can set this level on here, you can watch this one and make it line up to this one. I recommend you try and get a small one, but you could do this with two torpedoes. You can put one here and one here and still accomplish the same thing. So this is a way to do it with your at home stuff. You don't have to buy this setup. Um, again, I really like this setup, it works great, but this is an alternate way of doing this and still remaining accurate and getting it all dialed in right. So now when you're tightening this system down, you're gonna to wanna to leave that on there and keep an eye on that bubble. Um, and it's the same thing even if you're using this large torpedo. Most of these torpedo mat torpedo levels have magnets in them. I'd recommend you get one with a magnet because then it holds onto the gun and doesn't move around. And you keep an eye every time you're tightening, you jump around checking, making sure your bubbles stay the same. Make sure while you're tightening your scope down that you're moving to both sides of the scope and front to back and keep crossing back and forth, you'll notice the bubble will move as you're tightening it and you just go to the opposite side to get the bubble to move to the other direction. And you keep a close eye on this and jump around while you're tightening it and just make sure that everything stays true. Be careful not to over tighten this stuff. A lot of times all of these things are aluminum. If you really get cranking on them too hard, you'll strip them right out and make for a bad day and an expensive mistake. Um, this looks good right now. I'm going to jump into showing you how I will bore sight this. Now, the reason I bore sight, and you can, they got all kinds of goofy things you can do this with. They got lasers, they got a laser cartridge you can put in here that matches your caliber. Um, they got lasers that fix into the end. Um, there's all different kinds of ways of doing it. I've never owned any of those, and I'll tell you, this, what I'm about to show you has worked really good for me all of my shooting career and I've sighted in a lot of different people's firearms for them and uh, I've never had issues with this so I'm going to walk you through it and you'll be able to do it yourself and it, what this does is I'll usually when I'm going to go sight this in after I go through this exercise I will uh, I will take and um, I'll start at probably 25 yards get on the paper and then I really move it in tight and then I start to move back 50, 100, until I figure out you know, where I want to zero this particular firearm. So I'm going to get both caps off. you got to take your bolt out. You can do this on a bolt action gun or any type shotgun, whatever. You need to be able to see through the barrel. You're going to put this somewhere where you're down range and you're gonna try to find something, um, like when I'm doing this in my garage, I'll take and I'll look, you're gonna look through the barrel and you're gonna line it up like a peep sight on a bow or the idea is just to make it look perfectly symmetrical and you're gonna line that barrel up on something. Like in my garage, it's a 40 by 30 garage. I would normally um, look at like the doorknob and then I would adjust the scope to it. And when I know at 30 or 40 feet, I know that the distance from here to here is about what my crosshair should be. So I'd take the center of the doorknob, your center shouldn't change, and I would put the cross, I'll adjust the crosshairs to the center of the doorknob, but then I'll go, so I'm aiming about this. You measure center line of the scope and center line of the barrel, and it comes to about two and a half inches in this case. In this case, two to two and a half inches above the doorknob. And then you're going to be pretty 
darn close to where you need to be and that'll get you started out on the range. That's gonna save you a lot of ammo, chasing bullets, getting a giant board, trying to figure out where you're at. Um, just going through this simple, easy, cheap step will save you a ton of money. You wanna make sure that the doorknob is center in the barrel where you can see it there, it's a little blurry. And then if you look here, you can see the crosshairs need to go to the left and up. And then you look at the crosshair and have it right above the doorknob center. And that's it. This gun is ready to go to the range and give it a whirl. Um, another thing that I like to do, I tap on these turrets, see if they move. Now's the best time to do it. Some of these um, more affordable scopes, uh, they move a little bit. I even take like a really uh, delicate rubber mallet, even on my loopholes, and I'll tap them a little bit before my shot. Sometimes it just moves it just a smidge to get it right, right where it belongs. So now after tapping on it, I'm gonna re-center it to the doorknob, and I'm gonna check. And nothing moved, it looks pretty good. So I'll make the caps back on this, and um, I'll go to the range with my brother and I'll help him get this thing finished set up. But I just wanted to bring you guys this video. I thought it would be really cool for you to see the way that this bog pod, it, I love using it for shooting. I can't get over how good this thing holds stuff in place. It's really great. The only downside to it is it's heavy, super heavy. But if you got a place where you're sitting and doing some long range shooting, even if it's a blind you sit in, I highly recommend this thing. It is sweet. It does an awesome job. And this is just another function for it. I mean, um, if you're gonna invest in a, a vice to work on your guns in your shop, you might as well get this thing and you can take it out hunting with you. Um, I'm real impressed with it. I would highly recommend it, and I'll probably be keeping this in my my arsenal of tools for quite a while. Um, I might even check into, they got a carbon fiber one. It's supposed to be a lot lighter. Uh, it'd be interesting to see if it's as strong and as sturdy. I mean, this thing is like a stone. I like it. I had, uh, I've got another tripod that I've used that I, I, I like. I thought it was nice, but I mean, this thing is just, it's choice. It's, it's right there top of the line i would uh i would highly recommend this to you guys so hope you got some use out of this video thanks for watching don't forget to like and subscribe have a good one guys